Hi, friends. I'm Pastor Jack Mantrick, pastor at Central United Methodist Church right here in Waterford, Michigan. Each Sunday morning, uh, accompanying our message, we have uh, message notes. You can write in the uh, spaces provided or in the margins, whatever is helpful for you to unpack the scripture and stay connected uh, as I give the, give the message for that morning. Uh, then there's five days of devotional materials, and uh, we have these daily devotions Monday through Friday. But this week, because of Labor Day, I'm combining Monday and Tuesday. So we hope you had a good and safe Labor Day and that uh, it will sort of get us into our fall schedule and making plans uh, uh, for the end of the year. I know that that's where we've got our, our focal point is trying to make it through the rest of this 2020 Um and, and uh, we do play, pray for your uh, safety and hope that you've kept safe over this holiday weekend. Here at Central Church, we've been part of an effort called Creating a Culture of Calling. We call it C3 for short. And it's all about discovering God's call upon our lives and what it means for each and every one of us to be called. Uh, and I thought it would be good over this Labor Day weekend to sort of talk about what would it mean to be called for service and work. And so there's a scripture lesson I'd like to share with you. There are scripture for Sunday, actually. It uh, was Corinthians, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, the first 11 verses. Let me read this to you. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. I do uh, I do want you to know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. There are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. May God add a blessing to this reading and hearing of, of that holy word. There's sort of this innate intuition, friends, <clears throat> excuse me, that we are called to service and for work. And, and that sort of means that we are uh, then gifted in some way to accomplish God's purposes here on earth. Paul tells us that uh, the abilities and talents to which we are gifted should be for the common good. And each of them is gifted through the same spirit, but each of them are different gifts and graces. So what gifts and graces do you possess? Uh, don't be modest. After all, these are gifts that God has bestowed upon you and, and which you have the responsibility to uh, develop. So ask yourself these questions before we get into the second part of today's devotion. Do you use your gifts and talents for God's purposes? How might you better utilize your gifts and talents for the common good? How can the community benefit from your gifts and your graces? And then uh, give thanks to God for the gifts that you've received as you think about all those gifts and what they mean uh, for God's work here on earth. Now, we're going to explore uh, over the next few days uh, three questions that come from a Roman Catholic priest, author and retired uh, professor, Michael Himes. He's a retired uh, professor of church history from Boston College. Father Heim suggests that it's helpful for us to reflect on three basic questions over uh, when we consider God's call for service and for work. The first question is what uh, is what you do a source of joy? In other words, uh, do you get a kick out of it? <laughs> do you love what you do? 
Uh, there are other questions. Uh, uh, ones I says, do they do you use them? Uh, are you using your gifts and talents uh, for something uh, that calls forth those talents? And then the third one is, do people want you to do it? And we'll discover those uh, over uh, the next couple of days and then tie this up on Friday. But for today, let's just consider that first question. Do you love what you're doing? Uh, do you, is it a source of joy for you? Do you, do you get a kick out of it? <laughs> oh, I shared that uh, my first eight years of ministry was as a youth pastor. And uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that time of my life. It was a time in which I met my wife and we began a children's program in the church I was serving uh, that lasted many years beyond our time there. And um, I had a youth group that uh, had about 70 kids on a, on a Sunday night and uh, big events that we would uh, do and uh, travel together. Uh, and and uh, for fun times, I remember the last weekend that I was the pastor there. We, it was a great gift to me in which we went, took 70 youth. Uh, to Cedar Point for the week, <laughs> for the weekend. It was it was really a fun time. You know, uh, many, many years later, uh, I ran into the father of one of the youth, actually a couple of the youth. And uh, he took me aside and he said, you know, I never really said this to you while you were here, but I wanted to thank you for all that you did to help our kids develop faith and uh, move along in, in their lives. And um, he said, I, I'm sorry that I never really shared that with you while you were here. And I thought that was sort of interesting. Um, I mean, his children would now be in their late 30s, early 40s. And uh, it was really neat. And, and I said, who wouldn't get a kick out of that? <laughs> who wouldn't, uh, you know, bubble up with great joy in hearing uh, that type of affirmation? So when considering this question for yourself, you may want to distinguish between happy and, and experiencing joy or contentment. Joy usually implies a deeper sense of contentment and satisfaction, that you know that what you are doing matters in the lives of others. So do you get a kick out of what you do for work, for the church, uh, for others, and in other community uh, organizations that you're involved with? Uh, do you get a kick out of it, uh, what you do for your family? I want you to think about that. Think about this first question that comes from Father Himes. Does, is what you do a source of joy for you? Do you get a kick out of it? <laughs> I hope that you'll find it helpful to start to think about how you are called by God, the giftedness that God uh, places in your life, and how you might use that for the common good of community. God bless you. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this time together. We ask that you would make us aware of your presence and call upon our lives, that it wouldn't be just something that is um, fuzzy and sort of uh, undefined, but rather that it is clear that the call that you place upon our hearts has fine definition and that it gives us uh, guidance and a sense of purpose in doing a work that is connected to your kingdom work here on earth. We ask that your wisdom prevail and that the power of your Holy Spirit be so apparent that we just can't wait uh, to work for your kingdom here on earth, as we say, as it is in heaven. Amen. Hey friends, have a great Tuesday. I hope you had a safe uh, Labor Day and uh, made this shortened week um, uh, give you a little respite as we move into uh, our fall. God bless and take care.